Hey everybody. Hi, welcome to another Facebook Live with Flow Living. I'm Elisa Vitti, founder of the Flow Living Hormone Center, where we are modernizing menstrual health care. And I like to come to you live every week to teach you and share with you strategies on how to live smarter and healthier in your female body. And for those of you who are celebrating today, happy Valentine's Day, happy Galentine's Day. I'm wearing pink in honor of love. (laughs) And actually, I am super excited. Yeah, tell me where you're tuning in from. Today's topic is going to be how to conquer endometriosis with lifestyle changes. I can't believe in all... All the, I think it's two years I've been doing Facebook Lives that somehow I have not talked about endometriosis. So we're talking about it today. And um, I'd love to hear if that's something that you're struggling with. But I'm going to tell you today I'm so excited because Valentine's Day, I think, I think it's my daughter's favorite holiday. Although she's, you know, she's just, she's four. So I think this is the year where she's really like um, feeling... The, the holidays, you know, like she really, she really got excited about Thanksgiving and like how exciting that it was. And I don't know, I think she just, I think she's just experiencing them in a way with her more mature self and really loving all of them. Um, and so today I thought, let me, I, I, and I've never done big holiday stuff. I didn't grow up doing it. Like there wasn't, you know, I'm, my parents are immigrants, so we just, it wasn't like a thing. <laughs> And I also really believe in like the homespun kind of stuff. So I, um, I decided today like to kind of just be a little extra, extra. So this morning she had, you know, heart shaped French toast, gluten free bread, maple syrup, cinnamon, you know, (laughs) uh, coconut oil with, um, strawberry pink love milk. So that was just frozen organic strawberries, almond milk, and a little dash of maple syrup. And I was like, oh, come out, come from, you know, I was waking her up. I was like, come see your breakfast. And she's like, what? (laughs) You know, then she saw the milk and she was so excited and she tasted it. She's like, can I have this every day? (laughs) Anyway, so cute. And then my husband told me that um, when he was walking her to school, she, he had to carry her a little bit of the way because of all the slush. And she was just singing, making up this song about um, love. I love, I love my friends. I love my French toast. Like she was just all feeling the love. And I just thought, oh, that's why I'm doing it. So I'm going a little bit more crazy tonight. And then I promise I'm going to get into all this endometriosis talk. I'm, I've decided to make a paper heart chandelier over the kitchen table for dinner. <laughs> And I'm going to make heart-shaped chocolate buckwheat cookies. Um, I found a great recipe. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to be a little extra. I'm finding that I really am appreciating Valentine's Day. Celebrating it with a kid is more fun for me because I like to be craftsy, I guess. I forgot all about it. (laughs) I used to love making stuff when I was younger. So having a little kid now is making me um, bringing that side back out. Uh, Anyway, so I'll take photos and I'll I'll share them on my Insta story. I know, right? So cute. (laughs) I'm having a good day. It's, you know, my husband and I are joking. We're like, yeah, we're not, we don't have to get anything each other for each other, but like we're loving doing this together for her. And uh, that's really sweet. Um, Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, Tuning in, Katie from Michigan, Senia from Denmark, Kayla, Inga from Belgium, uh, Ieva, oh, I like that name, Ieva from Latvia, Victoria from New York, oh my goodness, Angela from Alabama, Bethany from South Dakota, Caroline from Quebec, and Brown, wait, is it Lynn Ann? Is like, and it, I think your name is all flipped around, Lynn Ann, I'm not sure where you're tuning in from, but hello. Good to see you here. (laughs) Welcome, everybody. All right. So endometriosis. Oy. You know, um, it's a difficult, difficult condition. 
I wanted to just put a picture frame around it, talk about it, give you some of my um, perspective, my insights. Hey, Flavia from the UK, where my best friend lives. Uh, and, uh, oh, all right, cool, and Anne, now I know you're where you're at. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are um, a huge amount of women suffering from endometriosis. Um, it's a big problem. It's an increasing problem. 15% um, of women in the United States in their reproductive years are struggling with this. But the diagnosis process is very complicated and women go on average seven years without a diagnosis. And that's really problematic because that's seven years that you lose from taking actions that we're going to cover today that could be particularly helpful. So, you know, I don't, I'm not thrilled about that situation. <clears throat> and what is endometriosis? You know, it's where the lining of the endometrium grows outside of the uterus and can be um, problematic because that endometrial tissue is sensitive to your hormonal fluctuations <clears throat> uh, and can create cramping where you shouldn't have cramping because some of that the endometrial tissue can adhere to the lining of your uh, t can adhere to the fascia surrounding your uh, large intestine your bladder can just be in your pelvic cavity you know creating spasms um, when you know you're having your menstrual bleed um, it can make you feel uh, sluggish and bloated when you're in your PMS phase, when it's stimulated by progesterone. Uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's really a debilitating disorder. And anybody who's dealing with it, you know, is just going through it. And I, you know, I, I want to do what I can to help. Um, so, that's what I wanted to do today is just to kind of talk about it. Now, why is it that some women get endometriosis and others don't? You know, uh, some women may be genetically predisposed, but there are two other things that I think, since we, you know, can't really do so much about the genetic predisposition, there are two other factors that I think are really compelling. Right, Katie. Yes, I mean... It, Katie's talking about how hers was connected up to as far as her liver and her lower lungs. <clears throat> you know, it can travel. Um, it, and Lenana is saying it's not pretty at all. That uh, yes, I mean this is all. And let's not let's not forget to mention. Um, I would say right now, like the uterus patron saint of endometriosis in a way, because she's uh, brought it so much using her platform to the public eye. And that would be, of course, Lena Dunham. Um, and, you know, and unfortunately, she had to have her, under, her uh, uterus removed. And it's just, you know, and I say, I, I like to call her like the, the patron saint of endometriosis because she lost her uterus. And what I'm hoping is, of course, that we can, through all of us, uh, you know, having an improved, increased dialogue about endometriosis and demanding that more research be done and speaking up about our pain and, and the problems that everybody's having with it, that in the future, you know, it won't be a situation where somebody has to lose their uterus in their reproductive years. Um, but, you know, that's, that's my hope. And I think that that's something that we should work toward um, in the medical community, in the wellness community. Um, there's so much more that needs to be done for this disorder. Um, so let's, let's get that party started, shall we? So what are these other two, uh, factors that I want you to think about and how they might be impacting you? Um, the first is that for some women with endometriosis, there's an autoimmune like issue happening. So there's like a faulty immune response where, um, your immune system is not recognizing uh, that 
it doesn't it doesn't like seek and destroy the endometrial tissue that lands outside of the uterus. Um, so there's a problem with that. And then the second one, of course, is excess estrogen in the body. And of course, with the world that we live in today, um, the, this excess estrogen exposure from chemicals is the norm, not the exception. And, um, you know, I think that that's, uh, you know, su sort of s similar to excess estrogen. I would also put inflammation into the same kind of vertical because it's driven by lifestyle and dietary factors and inflammation in the body, you know, plays a role in disrupting or dysregulating your immune response. So it's all kind of a little vicious cycle. And what I know about you know, dealing with my own polycystic ovarian syndrome and the vicious cycle that that was is that those vicious cycles can be interrupted. Like, so, you know, this, all of it, the whole thing, as, as Lynn says, it's not pretty, but I think the good news that I can share with you today is there's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can do if you have endometriosis to get in the game with your body and interrupt this cycle. And, you know, I have women on our Instagram feed when we were posting that we were going to do this Facebook Live. You can go ahead and read. They were, they're talking about how implementing these changes that I'm going to tell you about today has helped them like put their symptoms into remission. So this is not just some like nice idea. Um, I really do f feel that even though endometriosis is probably the most uh, you, special, unique, challenging of all of the menstrual disorders, I still still maintain that it, that it will op it operates fundamentally in the same way as any menstrual disorder, right? The body is being dysregulated and there are ways in which we can modify diet supplements and lifestyle to come at a perpendicular to that dysregulation, start to support the body, its pathways of elimination, its processes of detoxification and with that plus the gift of time, especially if you've had it for a long period of time, the body seeks homeostasis. It just does. Now, that is not to say that there aren't certain extreme situations <clears throat> where, um, you know, for example, who, who was saying that it was up in her liver and her lungs, like obviously there are situations where you're going to need surgery to kind of clean up what has gone awry, if it's become really overgrown, um, that's a reality. Um, so, but wherever you're at, you can still help the body start to perform better. I mean, that's just the, that's just the nature of the body. It wants to do that for you. Um, so let me kind of lay out, let me see if I can, I can't see the second. Oh, wait. Oh, it opened today. Usually when I hit on more for the expanding your questions, it doesn't let me do it, but today it's working. Um, Bethany has a question about, uh, yeah, Bethany. So your question is more about, you know, how does it even get started in the first place? You know, again, that comes back to the immune system not identifying and destroying any endometrial cells that are not leaving the body in the ways that it's supposed to, right? Which is vaginally through menstruation. Um, how do you begin to narrow down where it is in the body? How do you discover that it has spread? You know, you need to work with an endometriosis specialist who will do laparoscopic investigations into your pelvic cavity to take, you know, samples to see if it's where it might be. Um, it is, that is why it is so hard to diagnose because they, we just don't have, um, you know, great diagnostic tools. You know, of course you're not going to get an x-ray and even an x-ray wouldn't really show you what you needed to see. Um, laparoscopic surgery is really, um, the, the, the gold standard right now. Um, you know, I would love to see people using more MRIs, but the reason why they probably don't do that is it's more expensive and insurance. And, you know, that's a whole other conversation about, you know, quality testing of anything and, you know, the whole hierarchy of doing it in the most cost effective way at first and then escalating only when absolutely critical. That's a, that's, that's a medical conversation. You know, I can't. 
I wish I could make those changes, but I'm not in charge <laughs> of that. Um, Daisy, yes, that's right. Um, Daisy's talking about you, she needed excision, excision surgery and it was a life, change, life changer. Absolutely, in some cases, you absolutely have to have the surgery. I am by no means saying that you should abandon, and, and, and never am I saying that. Flow Living has always maintained that what we need in the gynecological community is the diet and lifestyle partner, and that's what Flow Living is, right? So you still need to work with your gynecologist. If you have endometriosis, you're still going to want to work with someone who's a specialist. And Daisy, if you want to list out the name of that doctor, I'm sure everybody here would be really interested to hear who that person is. Um, I, it's really, this is what you do when you're not at the doctor in between, you know, to prevent and repeat surgery, to, you know, minimize, um, your internal drivers of the disorder as much as you can. And I think that is empowering. And I think that instead of, you know, for me with my PCOS, I just know that it made me, it took, it, it relieved the sense of feeling like a victim to my body and instead made me feel like, well, I'm going to get in the game with her and we're going to, we're going to be okay. And I personally really like that relationship with my body versus just feeling like, you know, I don't know what to do and I'm going to just, you know, hope for the best. Um, so that's, uh, <laughs> that is, uh, you guys are, you're so wonderful. You wish I was in charge of the medical, you know, I would, I would need a lot of advisors to figure out how to fix the hospital situation. So I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna put myself up for that job, but I'm happy to run flow living <laughs> and do what I can. Um, so, <clears throat> um, Great. You guys are offering such good, important in information. Yeah, so Ashley, right? So your endo couldn't be seen on ultrasound. They're going to try all the, sh you know, immediate, less expensive testing first. That's why it takes an average of seven years for a diagnosis, right? So <clears throat> they'll try with ultrasound. Then they might try with laparoscopic, you know. So it, 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 that's why what I mean when they, they sort of escalate in that way. Um, okay, so let me just talk about the things that I um, think can be helpful. And I encourage you to chat about these things with your doctor and not only get their opinion, but also potentially educate them on some natural things to do. Um, I'm always surprised at how open um, uh, my doctors are to hearing about these things. And then I find it really interesting when, this is a funny story, I made a, a special hospital plan for the delivery of my daughter and I emailed it to my OB, right, when it was time to go, you know, or, or within weeks of us, you know, having the birth. And it was like just two pages, bullets, just for the nurses and everybody coming in and out of the room with certain things that I wanted and, you know, so that there was no you know, stress and I wanted to be very respectful of everybody and also have them respect my space while I was giving birth and the whole thing, right? And um, I was at my OBGYN for my annual checkup and there was a couple who was very close to delivery date and they, I saw the receptionist hand them a two-page document and I just was, I'm always curious. So I just looked at the document and it was my document, <laughs> but they had, you know, edited it to make it a little bit more like a yes or no, do you want these things and put their, their logo on it, which is so cool. But that's what I'm saying is don't underestimate, um, good information is, is viral and you just like I can spread that even in a medical setting. And that is so, um, so cool. Right. Don't worry. I, it then also made me think, oh, I should make that available to all the women at Flow Living. So I'll be doing that soon. <laughs> Just in case you were like, oh, <laughs> where's the birth plan? I'll, I'll, I'm going to get it organized for everybody. All right. So, um, and for those of you who are saying you wish you lived closer to specific doctors, wherever they are, wherever you are, you can always call that doctor's receptionist and see if 
they have a referral colleague for you in your area because think about it someone who specializes in something so niche they're very likely attending annual conferences together somewhere you know and they know about each other and where their practices are so they may actually have a referral for you in your area even if they're based far away and you can't get to them and that's worth that's really worthwhile for you to make a phone call it's free right it's free information okay so let's get into my my ideas for you and what you might want to start trying to see how your body responds um so I think it's all about reducing inflammation, balancing hormones, and supporting your immune system, right? These are the three things that we can inter, you know, involve ourselves with in our bodies. Why not? So the first thing is start by limiting, if not um, eliminating, uh, exposure to all toxic um, chemicals that are uh, toxic forms of estrogen that are found in your cleaning products, in cosmetics, in bathroom products, wherever you have like products, go through your house with a fine tooth comb and throw stuff out. <laughs> um, so hair care, I mean, tip to toe. I've done Facebook Lives on what hair care I use, what makeup I use, what cleaning products I use. Um, you know, I was just I was just back. You know, when I, I did my holiday travel, I brought a bunch of like wool blend sweaters and things because I was going up north to New England where it was more more chillier. And I came back and I'm like, I'm not dry cleaning this. I'm just gonna wash it. I washed everything in cold, gentle, and they came out just fine. I was like, I don't even believe the hype anymore when it says dry clean only, unless it's maybe silk. And even then, you know, I'm like, how can I just spot wash, like, you know, wherever I need to. Uh, So, you know, just wherever you can be ruthless about chemical exposure in your own home, do so. Anything that plugs into a wall that is like making a smell, Febreze, um you know, oh my God, the Febreze. I can't, I can't with that. Can that just go away? It's terrible. <laughs> I just, um, uh, you know, uh, eyeshadow and mascara. Yeah. I mean, it's all going on your body. I'm using uh, right now. I have, what do I have? Ilia mascara I have on and, um, I have some mascara from Whole Foods, I mean, an eyeliner from Whole Foods, like I think it's um, mineral something or other, just a plain black eyeliner and I smudge it a little bit. Um, And then I have, uh, what's on my cheek here? Uh, Vapor, Vapor, it's a lip to cheek. You know, I just put a little there, a little there. Um, And then RMS Uncover Up. That's it. And then in my hair care, I, I finally discovered some great hair care, um, you know, so I, I can ha- I'm happy to share that too. Oh, Linan, that is so cool. You made your own laundry detergent. I would love the recipe for that. Yes, Daisy, you guys are so smart. Use the Environmental Working Group's app and scan your products. That is so smart. I also just tend to try to shop. Um, thank goodness the guy who founded Sephora is realizing like the wellness trend is a big one and he created another company that is exactly like Sephora but full of natural makeup, hair care, skin care. It's called Credo Beauty. Um, Super great. I get anything I need from Credo. They basically have all the products that I like and they're not all of them are perfect but the ones that are that I know of I buy and I have them ship wherever I I am. It's so cool. Yes, Linan, like just an essential oil diffuser. Like I have one back here. Um, I keep a lot of plants, although you can't see them all. I keep a lot of plants in the house to naturally purify the air because I live in a city, you know, things like that. Oh, and take your shoes off at the front door. Do you know that? How much junk you carry into the house, bacteria and things that have compromised your immune function, like that's already compromised. Like keep your dirty shoes in the front door vestibule the foyer and then like you know 
do that. It's helpful. Um, I wish they built front doors like they do in Japan. So cool. Uh, they have like a little deep, like a slightly sunken spot when you open the door. And so you know to take your shoes off and then you step up. And there's even like a handrail on the wall to hold because you got to take, you like, you cannot go past that sunken area. So it's really, really great. Um, I know I always think about if you have a dog, what do you do? If I had a dog, I'd probably, and I lived in the city, you know, I think it's slightly different if you live in a more natural setting, right? But if I lived in the city, or if I lived in a suburban environment where everybody was spraying pesticides all over their lawn, I would push sho little shoebies on my doggy. I would. And I'm sorry, they're drilling upstairs, so if you hear some weird buzzing, unfortunately, that's what's happening today. Um, I would. I would take that extra step because then they're all over the house with the stuff that I, I would not want to be rolling around in myself. So I know it's not great, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, okay, another step is get rid of, you know, uh, pesticide exposure as much as you can. The primary way that you can do that is by buying organic foods. Um, there are some companies that are coming out that are really cool that are uh, working with local organic farms to send people imperfect, ugly produce that never gets stocked in a store because, you know, like the carrot has like bumps on it or, um, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, it's like slightly imperfect, but it's organic. It's perfectly good to eat. It's not like it's old. It just grew funny looking, you know, <laughs> and... I so you can you can Google uh, imperfect food subscription boxes and just it's a way to make buying organic produce much less expensive, and I think that is so great. Not to mention it's reducing food waste and um, helping the um, the environment and you know all these things that we women have to think about. Yes, imperfect produce. That's yeah, and there's like several d new delivery companies. Um, I'm about to subscribe to one because I just love this idea so much. Um, I grew up with two sets of grandparents that had gardens and all, and I always thought it was like the, the fun thing to get like the carrot that, like the one carrot that grew twisted and I was like, oh, it's a special carrot. I never thought that that meant it was bad. I thought it was like, oh, it's the magic carrot. So <laughs> I, I uh, like this idea so much. Um, Angela wants to know which cleaning products are ideal. I think the best place to start is just seventh generation uh, or e-cover. Uh, they just make everything from dish soap, uh, dishwasher soap, um, hand soap, laundry soap. They make it all. Uh, they make you know room fresheners that you can actually use. They make they make everything. So you just go and go on their website and you can see all the products you could swap. Okay, so. Um, Baking soda, you guys are such pros. Yes, you can go create, you can clean your whole house with baking soda, white vinegar. <laughs> you could basically do, and your laundry, you know, uh, hydrogen peroxide, right? So if I wanna really deep clean my clothes, I, I put in baking soda and hydrogen peroxide and detergent. I never use bleach because, you know, that's got carcinogenic, estrogenic, xenoestrogenic chemicals. Um, my mom was a big bleach person for her whites and towels and sheets. And yeah, you know, it does keep things whiter. But in the end, I find that I can get real close to those results with white vinegar, baking soda, and hydrogen peroxide. Um, so that's what I do. Um, oh my God, this drilling. Crazy. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about some foods that you can eat. Um... So I want you to emphasize dark leafy green vegetables, cruciferous, uh, to help flush that estrogen out of your body and cook them, especially if you have thyroid issues, but also to make sure that you don't develop thyroid issues. So you want to really eat cooked, you know, uh, dark leafy greens um, as much as possible. Um, <laughs> yeah, Katie, I could do that too, but it's like a habit. I would just buy white sheets. <laughs> uh, be also because I try to buy organic cotton sheets and often they're just white, but it works out fine. Um, so, 
Uh, so that the, it, this really supports the liver in its process of breaking down estrogen. Um, eating more healthy fats is really important and reducing the ones that are not good for you, like heavy animal fats, saturated animal fats really exacerbate endometriosis, but coconut oil, avocado fat, um, real olive oil, this is very, very good. Um, if you're gonna have animal protein, you know, in fact, exploring a short stint of being vegan for a short period of time to help the body recover and catch its breath for a minute is not a bad idea, even though I rarely recommend that for uh, women with period issues. But I think given the, the research, backing off for a couple months, a month, two months, do what you can, um, you know, thinking about, um, you know, a little bit of, instead of having meats, doing, just kind of going vegan for a little bit or having fish and eggs and trying to back off of the, the, the more intense animal products. But if you are gonna have them, absolutely grass-fed, organic, and the leanest cuts. So I would say if you're ever gonna have red meat, um, it should just be bison because it's so lean um, or other game, red game meats if you can get access to them like elk or you know venison, very, very lean. Uh, and so you're not gonna have that saturated. I would definitely avoid beef altogether and lamb, you know, duck, duck fat, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and Linan, if egg and fish are bothering you, back off of them too. That's really important. And obviously avoid the um, infl inflaming foods like gluten, dairy, sugar. That's really important as well. Um, so some other things that you can do <clears throat> would be um, supporting your immune system with specific foods that are high in vitamin A and um, sulforaphane, so things like carrots, sweet potatoes, kale, cabbage, broccoli, beets, artichokes, lemons, onions, garlic, leeks, right? Um, those types of foods, really, really helpful. Um, yeah, Daisy, I agree, no beef, definitely not. Um, Bison, you can experiment in small quantities uh, because it's very lean, but it's still red. And so that would be like if you ever once in a blue moon were craving a burger or something, you know, have three ounces at a time and, and eat a lot of vegetables and sauerkraut with it and, you know, flax, venison is okay. Exactly. Hard to get. Hard to get venison. Um, so... There's that. Then you've got to do some other things for some herbal and diet and supplemental things to help with the immune system. Taking a good probiotic is really important. I know some of you are using the probiotic that uh, I formulated called the Gutsy. Um, helping the liver detox. Oh, that's cool, Daisy. Um, yeah, no sugar. We said no sugar, no dairy, no gluten, anything that's inflaming. Alcohol is sugar. And then also with your fruits, you want to choose low glycemic fruits. So berries, you know, it's very easy to find a list of that online. Try to really limit. Um, Daisy, I'm so glad you're loving the supplements. They, the li I was going to say the detox supplement has got a lot of the things that your liver can uh, be finding useful to help with breaking down that estrogen. But also, um, the best, Rihanna, that's a great question. What's the best way to detox the liver? It's a multifaceted um, process. So it's a combination of eating the right foods to give your body the glutathione and selenium that your liver needs, the vitamin A, the vitamin B, the vitamin C, the vitamin E. Your liver is like a big storage unit for all of these micronutrients. So you have to eat foods that give your liver that stuff. Then it goes through its phases of detoxification. And then the foods that you're eating that give it those micronutrients also provide your large intestine with the fiber 
that your body needs to actually, once the liver has packaged the excess estrogen for elimination and broken it down, it has to bind with fiber in the large intestine for you then to eliminate that via your bowel movements. So that's like a whole multifaceted process, but also supporting the liver means sweating on a regular basis, exercising the body, helping using the lymphatic system as one of the main organs of elimination is great too. But you can also take supplements that are a little bit more intensively supportive of the liver's detoxification process. Um, <clears throat> so you can take things like milk thistle, you can take things like calcium deglucurate, um, which is really great. Um, you can take extra flax seeds, you can take um, dandelion root, that's really, really good. What if you don't sweat when you work out? You gotta sweat a little bit somehow. So if that's because, I used to not sweat when I was uh, carrying around a lot of excess weight. It took, it like it just didn't come out, um, which I thought was really ironic given how much I got hot, but I wasn't sweating. And that was a sign that my elimination processes weren't working properly. And again, I apologize for this buzzing. I hope you're not hearing it as much as I am. But yeah, you could do like a steam room um, you could try that, or um, you could see if doing a little dry brushing, you can buy a dry brush at any Whole Foods will carry them, or natural store, and just see if helping the skin uh, turn over some of the cells and also the lymphatic system might help you sweat more easily uh, when you do work out. Um, Evening primrose oil can decrease inflammation. Probiotics, somebody mentioned the relationship between the gut, SIBO, and endometriosis. You bet, right? Because we talked about how one of the root causes of endometriosis is a faulty immune response. And one of the ways you can dysregulate your immune response is by having um, SIBO or having leaky gut. So one of the ways to prevent leaky gut or to heal from leaky gut is to cut out gluten and dairy and to drink things like bone broth that contain collagen and take good probiotics. But if you have SIBO, that's sort of like next level problem. That means the bad bacteria have become very deeply established in the small intestine and you may actually have to take antibiotics and you have to work with a SIBO specialist to clear out the bad bacteria whilst you're bolstering the good bacteria and to try to regain a f a, the right balance where you have more good bacteria to bad bacteria. So that's a whole other ball of wax. In fact, um, there's a, a friend of mine uh, who, who documented her journey from SIBO to, ba to being bacterially balanced in her gut. Um, and her blog I think is called Feed Me Phoebe, but her full name is Phoebe Lapine, L-A-P-I-N-E. So if you're someone who's dealing with SIBO, I would check out her personal journey because it's very um, detailed on what to expect. Anna, how do I feel about collagen? Funny you ask that question. Um, I, I, I am, uh, respectfully skeptical about the uh, s what's in bovine collagen based on the sourcing of the ingredients. Um, I also think it's a lot to take it in the scoop form, <clears throat> um, you know, and I wonder how that impacts transit time and I think there's just a little bit more deeper dive that I would want to do with that. But I do like the collagen that you can get in the, in the dose that you would get from making like uh, bone broth, especially from fish bones and um, you know chicken bones because they have some other properties to them that are really, really beneficial. And you're not gonna get such a huge dose. So I think it's more that I have an issue with the dose, but also because most of the, I mean, any, anywhere I've looked, um, Bo bone, uh, bovine uh, bone sourcing is done from other countries and the standards for organic farming and grass-fed is like doesn't translate everywhere so I'm um, I am curious uh, about it 
So <clears throat> that's the deal. Um, so some of you are saying you're having a hard time giving up on gluten. Uh, rice cakes I wouldn't do because they spike up your blood sugar. And I would absolutely um, really, really recommend that you just start cooking some whole grains for yourself like buckwheat or you know millet or some brown rice or check out some of the... Um, the lentil pastas, I love like the red lentil pasta or the, that's probably my favorite. Um, you know, so it's like you're having pasta and then they make delicious gluten-free breads. I really like the food for life um, rice breads. They have red rice, black rice, brown rice, delicious. So you don't, definitely don't do rice cakes, um, not good. Um, so that, uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I know, Anna, you're talking about vital proteins. Yeah, I'm, um, I, I mean, I, I certainly it has health benefits, and I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just, uh, I tend to like taking food as medicine in its uh, unrefined form, if I can. So if a little bit of collagen is good, let me take that in in food form versus a, you know, a huge dose of collagen. Um, that's my preference personally, but you can experiment with it and see how you do. <clears throat> um, steel cut oats, um, steel cut oats are fine. Uh, you can get the gluten-free ones. Um, you know, there's been some recent news about oats being sprayed with glyphosate. So you just want to check it's, you know, honestly, with what's going on with food production these days, it's enough to make anybody want to just grow their own food. <laughs> but, you know, that's, an, that's a big commitment. Um, what's a good bone broth when you don't have time to make it? Yeah, no, I don't tend to make my own bone broth because I'm also too busy, Lynn So I try to source it from different places. Um, there are a bunch, but I've been, I'm really lucky. I found a, a, a small entrepreneurial woman who started making bone broth for her children and herself when they had gut issues. And it's kind of turned into this like bone broth delivery system that she's got here in like Connecticut and New York. So ask around your community and see if anybody's making bone broth and then just see if you can become a customer. Because if they're going through the hassle of like making a big pot of bone broth, um, you know, that's a great way to do it. So that's the thing uh, that I would do and encourage a woman to get into business for herself. Uh, that's, what, that's what I would do. I'm always encouraging women to get into business. Uh, we're just natural entrepreneurs. So I would say those are some things that you can start doing that are really gonna tackle you know, because the flow protocol, for example, is going to help you with supporting your estrogen elimination. It's going to support your immune system. It's going to go through all the things that we talked about. Um, and you can make these swaps in your products such that you're reducing your exposure to xenoestrogens that are compounding the problem. And this doesn't seem like it's a lot, but when you are coming from the point of view from your body, right, you're removing all of these obstacles, you're reducing inflammation, you're removing points of stress that are, you know, in, internal stressors. This is going to allow the body to do its job. Its job is to keep your hormones balanced. Its job is to, to eliminate estrogen. Its job is to have proper immune function. It can't do its job if there are things that are in your environment, in your diet, in your body that are preventing those functions from happening. So this is the whole premise of functional medicine is really like, how can we get out of the body's way first? And then how can we support it to do its job more optimally? And let's give it time to heal because time is a powerful medicine when there's been many, many months and years of these these inappropriate inputs um, that are, <clears throat> you know, causing problems. So um, I, of course, always want to support women who are thinking about, well, how can I take the next step? How can I support myself? 
you know, I'm a big believer in learn something and then take some immediate action. And I gave you like a huge list of things to try um, and how are you going to implement it? How are you going to be diligent about it? How, um, how are you going to make sure that you're changing your diet, you're taking the right supplements, you know, and not get overwhelmed and quit? And uh, those were the questions I asked myself when I was, you know, trying to figure out how to put my own PCOS into remission. And so, you know, you all know my story. I wanted to build the platform that would hold my hand, uh, would have hold, held my hand when I was going through, you know, starting out. <clears throat> um, how do I get from, you know, the starting point to well on my way to being fully educated and well practiced in implementing the things I now know I need to do. So I built a, a digital virtual platform to kind of like the Rosetta Stone for your hormones. And uh, that's called Monthly Flow. And so it takes you step by step. I'm teaching you, it's like 23 different little mini modules, um, breaking down how do you stabilize blood sugar? How do you balance your adrenals? How do you reduce inflammation? How do you reduce stress? How do you improve the liver detoxification? How do you fix your gut, your bowel movements? and all and all and all of those things. What are the products to swap? It really goes deep. So for those of you who need more support, who want that hand holding, who like that, um, it's there for you. And if you are excited to give that a try now, you can. Um, and there's gonna be a special um, you know, celebration of you taking action. So we have this um, solve your endometriosis bonus package. If you purchase monthly flow, in the next um, 48 hours, you're gonna get my four-day hormone detox plan, which is a $50 value, which is gonna help you kickstart this estrogen elimination. You're gonna get my personal hormone medicine cabinet, natural remedies for women, which is a $30 value, which is gonna help you <clears throat> um, make those swaps and you know take care of yourself naturally. And then you're gonna get um, a special masterclass on putting an end to your endometriosis um, as well. It's another $30 value. And it's just a way for, for me to celebrate you taking action for, on behalf of your hormones by, by um, getting in gear with Monthly Flow. It's our premier menstrual hormone balancing program and you can do it from anywhere in the world. If you have ovaries and an internet connection, you can do monthly flow. So um, it is uh, something that if you need the deeper dive to do all the cleanup work that the flow, the flow protocol offers, this is the best way to do it. Um, so <clears throat> we finally talked about endometriosis. Um, I'm so glad that we were able to do that finally, and thank you for all your questions. I'm happy to talk more about endometriosis. So if you have other things you want me to talk about in general, whether it's endo-related <clears throat> or any topic, always make a note in the comment, and um, I will be scouring your comments for your thoughts on what else you'd like me to talk about. And if you wanna take advantage of the Solve Your Endometriosis bonus package. All you need to do is purchase monthly flow and send your receipt to support at flowliving.com and you'll get emailed immediately um, all of the bonus um, content um, right away. And I'm trying to type that out for you, which is difficult for me to do while I'm talking. <laughs> Some people are very good at typing and talking at the same time. Uh, that's not my skill set. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> All right, ladies. Well, I'm wishing you a beautiful rest of your Valentine's Day, your Galentine's Day. Um, I'm sending you, your ovaries, your uterus, a lot of love. And I hope that you've been inspired by um, just how uh, the list of things that you can start doing, um, you know, immediately to help you start getting into a compassionate relationship with your body to help deal with your endometriosis. 
The body wants to heal, so getting in action is definitely the right first step. All right, until next week, take very good care of yourselves. I'm going to go make that heart chandelier, and I'll post some of those pictures on my Insta story, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you, ladies. Bye.